ဒီဝီဖိုးမှာသူကဒီကဘာနဲ့ပတ်သက်ပြီးသိမ်းပြီးသွားမလဲဆိုတော့ဒီစစ်ရီကဏဇေရှင်နဲ့ပတ်သက
one-to-one -one problem where you just want to know if the person is the person they claim to be. So the recognition problem is much harder than the verification problem. To see why, let's say you have a verification system that's 99% accurate. So 99% might not be too bad. But now suppose that K is equal to 100 in a recognition system. If you apply this system to a recognition task, with 100 people in your database, you now have a 100 times uh, chance of making a mistake. And if the chance of making a mistake on each person is just 1%, so if you have a database of 100 persons, um, and if you want an acceptable recognition error, you might actually need a verification system with maybe 99.9 .9 or even higher accuracy before you can run it on a database of 100 persons and have a high chance and still have a high chance of getting it correct. Um, in fact, if you have a database of 100 persons, you probably need this to be even quite a bit higher than 99% for that to work well. But what we'll do in the next few videos is focus on building a face verification system as a building block. And then if the accuracy is high enough, then you will be able to use that in a recognition system as well. So in the next video, we'll start describing how you can build a face verification system. It turns out one of the reasons that is a difficult problem is you need to solve a one-shot learning problem. Let's see in the next video what that means. ဟုတ်ပါပြီးဒီဟာလို့လည်းပြီးသွားလာမယ်နဲ့အောင်လောက်ကြီးကွာကိုကြည့်နာလည်းစိတ်ထားမိတယ်ပေါ့เนาะခ
Malah dia jual hari ni baru di Facebook kena verification ni, di kena tu sih ni betul dah. Macam siapa sih ni lah, coba. Hello. Hello. Coba. Hello. Coba coba. Hello senarai ni deh. Kita kalau kita sih ni baru lama ni 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 lalu baru. Okay okay. Esok alat jangan dia ni 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 ni. Bukan tu saya dia ada. Okay. Di sini sambil dia ada. Bukan dia ada tu. Jadi, tu pertama orang ni mahu jadi nafis rukun ada sih sebab apa le? Bukan tu ini aku sih ni. Eh ada cukup. Di sini rukun ada sih nak hobi. Balas atau balas mesti dia buat apa? Ada mana tu video ni lalu dia ada. Bukan di video ni dia tiap macam tu. Tua tu tua tu ada juga tu kain dia ada. Tu kain tu lepa ada. Bukan tu ada ni tu ada di kamera sih mana dia video tu ada ada. Bukan yang macam mana lah, biar tu lah jalan itu dah tu hot day, bukan tu lah dukuran yang hot day, dukuran yang hot dah tu dah tu, tu lakukan biar tu lah dia sebab bukan, lebih bukan lebih tu kuat itu dia awal. Ada kuat jadi macam apa tu ada juga juga biar tu tu ngaji macam apa, tu tu ngaji mana lah biar lah biar tu ada ni lah biar pun jadi ya malah bukan, macam ya aku kalau bukan ni tu kan tu kau mah tu aku pun memang sebab bukan, biar tu nama tu ada ada lah tau ni bukan, lebih tu kalau macam ya aku kalau bukan lebih tu, di sini saya memang suka macam Kau dah lama ni mana yang macam jauh ya naik sih, orang kamera lau di mana aku buat, ada macam di security replacement macam tu, terlalu kau ni buat. Ada ni mana yang di sini orang sangat tidur, orang ramai macam tu macam tu, terlalu tau ni buat. Orang di kobe kalau macam di di social distancing sudah tu kalau awal, kalau awal yang free macam ni buat. Lalu sebab terlalu ni buat, lalu ni dia kalau lari kau lari cek jam, terlalu apa pun jadi dia nak kisah, terlalu ni kau lakukan apa pun dia kisah, nak khusus orang tak kahwin kamera dia terlalu dia tidak. Terlalu tau mau kamera lu kau tau mau basuh lari terlalu kamera tak khusus ya, mana? Lalu jauh macam tu, tau ngah. Eh, tamu kamera atau mula mana pujian yang belau sih dia tujuh orang atau dua orang yang lain nak kau tu jangan esok lagi dah. Sebab orang malak kan esok tu boleh lalu hari mana di jauh masa ni mesti sangat lebih sih. Kalau di hari kah mana kau di dulu bahu mahu usah dah lekuk apa jauh mana di masa ni tu ada kenal sih orang ni makau mana kau ada gaya hobi ambil apa yang nak makau kau yang Dapung ber, kerana lu lu dapung hoya lah, dah mahu ni dah me, dia 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 dapung ni dekuk lah, dah mahu dah image ni dekuk lah, lagu kau ni dia dapung ni lah. Anu dia macam tu, orang dah mungkin beti ni lah, first case ni bukan, atau new case ni semua belum lalu ni. Anu betul betul lah, live live ni sih dah sih, untuk kau ni bukan, anu betul betul bukan lalu jadi apa ni. Dia ada dia malu tu, anu kau bermalu tau. Dia ada face tu kan ada jenis apa ni, so dia jangan lupa jodoh ni bukan. Ada kuat di mana tu? Di kau jual ada isu beli jual topi aja tu boleh. Lepas tu naale awal tu, mana real life mana tu? Tahun ni lepas tu jual ni, mana lepas tu jual tu habis. Ayam macam ni mana? Ini nak kuat lepas tu bongkar nanti kuat. Nampak di Facebook ni ada sih orang macam ni. Di kau mana? Di proses ni nak khusi ya. Di verification ni ada proses ni terkhu. Ini orang kuat kau kan lu kuat ni mana? Di verification ni ada sih apa? Dua, one two one mana? Kau isu beli ni nampak macam ni. Eh, ama ada bongkar, di ama ada bongkar dia, dia lah di macam ni kuat kuat. Kau yang di bima dapat untuk bermain siapa pun dan dia objek ini dapat boleh buat. Output whether the image is that there or the claim person. Jadi nak aku, ama, kalau ada soal sebenar ni dia mesti selalu passport objek dia. Nah, dah. Passport mana? Ada soal di immigration tu ada kajian di bawah, no? Di bima di bima mana immigration belum berapa tapi nampak macam tu. Ada tu ada kajian. Kau pergi, aku tu aku, kau pergi. Piwan di, kau kau yang di passport balik pergi, kau yang pergi selagi ada dia. Ada berapa dapat dia ada berapa lah. Kau aku, kau ada hobi. Nah, ngah mampu ni, mangah pas pun majid ha. Lo ni ada di dulu dulu pun, ni pas sekolah ni. Lo ni ada hobi. Lo ni tu, ni hari ni apa matang? Di verification proses apa matang? Lo ya le tu. Tu na le tu dia di immigration proses ni matang ni. Lo ni cakap macam mana tu? Di auto betul tu? Di nengen dari tu, no. Lo di di verification auto gate tu, lo si dia, no. Kau tu apa immigration kita ada malu lau. Tu le auto gate matu apa? Tu le di tu dap tu le ni naik. Tu le di IC kap, no. Di mana tu le di nengen dari kau kalah dia. Di hari verifikasi, verifikasi tu le tu apa, no. Lakukan aja tu, no. Proses ni ni jenis macam apa? Abdul Jawab ni, yang ni yang awal lembono, sesi alam lo, meja alam lo ni, abaya lapa apa meja alam lo, ni yang dengan dah hold lah, hold ni, ni dua ni ni air si maron ni abaya di tujuh supaya ni dua ni, ni na air tujuh ni lah. Lalu soalan tu, wan dua wan apa ni ada support dia, ada ni 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 lah. Nale lah, ini verification proses ni, hello hello. Nale balik, nale balik. Dah verification tu lah, no. Dah ada di sana orang ni, dia awam macam ni, pun ada tu ni, airport mana tu awak kau verify lo dekai sabo, no. Luka aku masuk gula sebab manual lo ni kisah esok, hello. Apple ni lah, mahu bawa ni kan? Ni lah sen, ni lah. Mama bawa ni, ni lah. Nenek saya bawa ni. Lu ya lu ni bawa ni. Proses lu ni bawa ni. Jauh bawa ni. Dah beri definition proses. Aku ada lah di kuna organisation proses. Tapi kuna ada so kuna tu jauh ada di muka time bawa ni. Kau ye kerja kau yang dia malu sama ayat dia asyik cincin ni, naya asyik cincin ni, tunggu asyik cincin ni. Kau dah hop. Kau ada ayat tunggu ada mati ya. Kalau so, kalau so ni nanti ya mesti. Kalau so ni DB dia mana DB dia dah biasa bawa ni. Kau tung tung tak lah. Kalau tu mati ya, ini mesti tung tak lah. Kau dah hop. Kalau so lah. Di tengah ni, kalau tu mati ya, mak aku dah buang air. Kalau tu mati ya, mak paye lah so. Saya ada tu bawa tu jauh je nak bawa. Air tu bawa dia lalu lagi. Kalau tu kalau ni ada air mak bau so ni ya. Kang aku kalau t
ไอ้ฟิเกชั่นนั่นได้น้ําเลยกูไม่ได้ซื้อเลยอ่ะนะโอเคโอเคดูมาเลยจ้าเอามาเลยพิ้วรู้อ่ะพิ้วให้รู้
is to input the image of the person, feed it to a confnet, and have it output a label Y using a softmax unit with four outputs or maybe five outputs corresponding to each of these four persons or none of the above. So that would be five outputs in the softmax. But this really doesn't work well because if we have such a small training set, it's really not enough to train a robust neural network for this task. And also, what if a new person joins your team? Um, so now you have five persons you need to recognize, so there should now be six outputs. Do you have to retrain the confident every time? That just doesn't seem like a good approach. So to carry out face recognition, to carry out one-shot learning. So instead, to make this work, what you're going to do instead is learn a similarity function. In particular, you want a neural network to learn a function which is going to denote D, which inputs two images and it outputs the degree of difference between the two images. So if the two images are of the same person, you want this to output a small number. And if the two images are of two very different people, you want it to output a large number. So during recognition time, if the degree of difference between them is less than some threshold called tau, which um, is a parameter, a hyperparameter, then you would predict that these two pictures are of the same person. And if it's greater than tau, you would predict that these are different persons. And so this is how you address the face verification problem. To use this for a recognition task, what you do is, given this new picture, you would use this function d to compare these two images. And maybe I'll output a very large number, let's say 10 for this example. And then you uh, compare this with the second image in your database. And because these two are the same person, hopefully it outputs a very small number. And then you do this for the other images in your database and so on. And based on this, you will figure out that this is actually that person, which is uh, Danielle. And in contrast, if someone not in your database shows up, as you use the function D to make all of these pairwise comparisons, hopefully D will output a very large number for all four pairwise comparisons. And then you say that this is not any one of the four persons in the database. Notice how this allows you to solve the one-shot learning problem. So long as you can learn this function D, which inputs a pair of images and tells you basically if they're the same person or different persons, then if you have someone new join your team, you can add a fifth person to your database and it just works fine. So you've seen how learning this function D, which inputs two images, allows you to address the one-shot learning problem. In the next video, let's take a look how, at how you can actually train the neural network to learn this function D. The job of the function. Wait, no, ဒီဒီစမာရ်ဒီအစီမှာလေ <laughs> ဟိုအကိုနှစ်ခုဟာတွေဟာကြတော့ဟိုဟာဖြစ်တော့အဲ့ဝိတ်ကိုနှိုက်ကိုကဟိုမှာခဏဖတ်တာဘဲဖြစ
ဟုတ်တယ်ဆီအနန်နာဆီအဒီတိုင်းအနန်နာတော်ဝါဘာပဲဒါပေမဲ့ရလာတဲ့ဟာကိုကျတော့အကူတို့ဒီဒီဒီ
So you've learned about the Siamese network architecture and have a sense of what you want the neural network to output for you in terms of what will make a good encoding. But how do you actually define an objective function to make your neural network learn to do what we just discussed here? Let's see how we can do that to the next video using the triplet loss function. The job of the function. <laughs> ก็ได้ใช่ป่ะเนาะดีหาเลยเลยอ่ะเลยอ่ะเลยอ่ะเลยอ่ะเลยอ่ะเลยอ่ะเลยอ่ะเลยอ่ะเลยอ่ะเล
ไอ้ก็อกุมันท่าได้มาที่ดูซูรุษิเนี่ยก็บ้านเนี่ยอกวยอยากจะที่สุบ้านเนี่ยตัวเบียวเราซูมเนาะกูบอกดิเลยเล
you have to look at several pictures at the same time. For example, given this pair of images, you want their encodings to be similar because these are the same person. Whereas given this pair of images, you want their encodings to be quite different because these are different persons. In the terminology of the triplet loss, what you're going to do is always look at one anchor image, and then you want the distance between the anchor and a positive image, really a positive example, meaning it's the same person, to be similar, whereas you want the anchor when paired or compared with a negative example for their distances to be much further apart. So this is what gives rise to the term triplet loss, which is that you always be looking at three images at a time. You'll be looking at an anchor image, a positive image, as well as a negative image. I'm going to abbreviate anchor, positive, and negative as A, P, and N. So to formalize this, what you want is for the parameters of your neural network or for your encodings to have the following property, which is that you want the encoding between the anchor minus the encoding of the positive example. You want this to be small. And in particular, you want this to be less than or equal to the um, distance or the squared norm between the encoding of the anchor and the encoding of the negative. Where, of course, this is D of A, P, and this mm -hmm. is D of A, N. Mm -hmm. And you can think of D as a distance function, mm -hmm. which is why we named it with the alphabet D. Now, if we move the term from the right side of this equation to the left side, what you end up with is f of a minus f of p squared minus, I'm going to take the right-hand side now, minus f of n um, squared. You want this to be less than or equal to 0. But now we're going to make a slight change to this expression, which is one trivial way to make sure this is satisfied is to just learn everything equals zero. If f always outputs zero, then this is zero minus zero, which is zero. This is zero minus zero, which is zero. And so, well, by saying f of any image equals a vector of all zeros, you can, you know, almost trivially satisfy this equation. So to make sure that the neural network doesn't just output zero for all the encodings, or to make sure that it doesn't set all the encodings equal to another, each other. Right? Another way for the neural network to um, give a trivial output is if the encoding for every image was identical to the encoding to every other image, in which case you again get zero, um, zero minus zero. So to prevent the neural network from doing that, what we're going to do is modify this objective to say that this doesn't need to be just less than or equal to zero, it needs to be quite a bit smaller than zero. So in particular, if we say this needs to be less than negative alpha, where alpha is um, another hyperparameter, then this prevents the neural network from outputting the trivial solutions. And by convention, usually we write plus alpha instead of negative alpha there. And this is also called a margin, mm -hmm. uh, which is terminology that you'd be familiar with um, if you've also seen the literature on support vector machines, mm -hmm. but don't worry about it if you haven't. And we can also modify this equation on top by adding this margin parameter. So to give an example, let's say the margin is set to 0 0.2. If in this example, d of the anchor and the positive is equal to 0 0.5, then you won't be satisfied if d between the anchor and the negative was just a little bit bigger, say 0 0.51. But even though 0 0.51 is bigger than 0 0.5, you're saying that's not good enough. We want d of a comma n to be much bigger than d of a comma p. And in particular, you want this to be at least 0 0.7 or higher. Or alternatively, to achieve this margin or this gap of at least 0 0.2, you could either push this up or push this down so that um, there is this, at least this gap of this alpha, mm -hmm. hyperparameter alpha 0 0.2 between the distance between the anchor and the positive versus the anchor and the negative. So that's what having a margin parameter here does, which is it pushes the anchor positive pair and the anchor negative pair 
further away from each other. So let's take this equation we have here at the bottom and on the next slide, formalize it and define the triplet loss function. So the triplet loss function is defined on triples of images. So given three images, A, P, and N, the anchor positive and negative examples. So the positive examples is of the same person as the anchor, but the negative is of a different person than the anchor. We're going to define the loss as follows. The loss on this example, which is really defined on a triplet of images, is, let me first copy over what we had on the previous slide. So that was um, FA minus FP squared minus F A minus F of N squared and then plus alpha, the margin parameter. And what you want is for this to be less than or equal to zero. So to define the loss function, let's take the max between this and zero. So the effect of taking the max here is that so long as this is less than zero, then the loss is zero because the max of something less than or equal to zero with zero is uh, going to be zero. So, so long as you achieve the goal of making this thing up underlined in green, so long as you've achieved the objective of making that less than or equal to zero, then the loss on this example is equal to zero. But if on the other hand, if this is greater than zero, then if you take the max, the max will end up selecting this thing up underlined in green, and so you would have a positive loss. So by trying to minimize this, this has the effect of trying to send this thing to be zero or less than or equal to zero, and then so long as it's zero or less than or equal to zero, the neural network doesn't care um, how much further neg negative it is. So this is how you define the loss on a single triplet, and the overall cost function for your neural network can be summed over a training set of these individual losses on different um, triplets. So if you have a training set of say 10,000 pictures with a thousand different persons, what you have to do is take your 10,000 pictures and use it to generate, to select triplets like this, and then train your learning algorithm using gradient descent on this type of cost function, which is really defined on triplets of, of images drawn from your training set. Notice that in order to define this uh, data set of triplets, you do need some pairs of A and P, pairs of pictures of the same person. So for the purpose of training your system, you do need a data set where you have multiple pictures of the same person. Yeah. Uh, that's why in this example, I said if you have 10,000 pictures of 1,000 different persons, so maybe you have 10 pictures uh, on average of each of your 1,000 persons to make up your entire data set. If you had just one picture of each person, then you can't actually train this system. But of course, after training, if you're applying this, um, but of course, after having trained the system, you can then apply it to your one-shot learning problem mm -hmm. where for your face recognition system, maybe you have only a single picture of someone you might be trying to recognize. But for your training set, you do need to make sure you have multiple images of the same person, at least for some people in your training set, so that you can have pairs of anchor and positive images. Now, how do you actually choose these triplets to form your training set? One of the problems if, if you choose A, P, and N randomly from your training set, uh, subject to A and P being the same person and A and N being different persons, one of the problems is that if you choose them sort of at random, mm -hmm. then this constraint is very easy to satisfy. Right? Because given two randomly chosen pictures of people, um, chances are A and N are much different than A and P. And I hope you still recognize this notation. This D A P was um, what we had written on the last few slides as these encodings. So this is just equal to um, this squared norm distance between the encodings that we had on the previous slide. But if A and N are two randomly chosen different persons, then there's a very high chance that this will be much bigger, more than the margin alpha, 
than that term on the left. And so the neural network won't learn much from it. So to construct your training set, what you want to do is to choose triplets A, P, and N that are hard to train on. So in particular, what you want is for all triplets that this constraint be satisfied. So a triplet that is hard would be if you choose values for A, P, and N, so that maybe D, A, P is actually quite close to D, A, N. So in that case, the learning algorithm has to try extra hard to take this thing on the right and try to push it up or take this thing on the left and try to push it down to, so that there is at least a margin of alpha between the left side and the right side. And the effect of choosing these triplets is that it increases the computational efficiency of your learning algorithm. If you choose the triplets randomly, then too many triplets would be really easy and so gradient descent won't do anything because your neural network will just get them right pretty much all the time. And it's only by choosing hard triplets that the gradient descent procedure um, has to do some work to try to push these quantities further away from those quantities. And if you're interested, the details are presented in this paper by Florence Schroff, Dmitry Kalinichenko, and James Philbin, where they have a system called FaceNet which is where a lot of the ideas I'm presenting in this video have come from. By the way, this is also a fun fact about how um, algorithms are often named in the deep learning world, which is if you work in a certain domain, um, let me call that blank, you often have a system called blank net or deep blank. So we've been talking about face recognition. So this paper is called face net. And uh, in the last video, you just saw deep face. But this idea of blank net or deep blank is a very popular way of naming algorithms in the deep learning world. And uh, you should feel free to take a look at that paper if you want to learn some of these other details for speeding up your algorithm by choosing the most useful triplets to train on. Uh, it is a nice paper. So just to wrap up, to train on triplet loss, you need to take your training set and map it to a lot of triples. So here is a triple with an anchor and a positive, both of the same person, and a negative of a different person. Um, here's another one uh, where the anchor and positive are of the same person, but the anchor and negative are of different persons, and so on. And what you do, having defined this training set of anchor, positive, and negative triples, is use gradient descent to try to minimize the cost function j we defined on an earlier slide. And that will have the effect of back propagating to all the parameters of the neural network in order to learn an encoding so that D of two images will be small when these two images are of the same person and um, they'll be uh, large when these are two images of different persons. So that's it for the triplet loss and how you can train a neural network for learning and encoding for face recognition. Now, it turns out that commercial face recognition systems are trained on fairly large data sets at this point, often north of a million images, sometimes not infrequently north of 10 million images, and there's some commercial companies talking about using over 100 million images. So these are very large data sets by modern standards, even by so that's it for the triplet loss and how you can use it to train a neural network to output a good encoding for face recognition. Now, it turns out that today's face recognition systems, especially the large scale commercial face recognition systems, are trained on very large data sets. Data sets north of a million images is not uncommon. Some companies are using north of 10 million images, and some companies have north of 100 million images with which to try to train these systems. So these are very large data sets, even by modern standards. These data set assets are not easy to acquire. Fortunately, some of these companies have trained these large networks and posted parameters online. So rather than trying to train one of these networks from scratch, uh, this is one domain where, because of the sheer data volume sizes, this is one domain where often it might be useful for you to download someone else's pre-trained model rather than do everything from scratch yourself. But even if you do download someone else's pre-trained model, I think it's still useful to know how these algorithms were trained uh, in case you need to apply these ideas from scratch yourself for some application. 
So that's it for the trip of loss. Um, in the next video, I want to show you also some other variations on Siamese networks and how to train these systems. Let's go on to the next video. ဟုတ်ပါပြီအလို့ဆိုတော့ပေါ့နော်ခန္ဓာစာအလက်စီမှာနှုတ်လေးထိုတာအရက်ပို့ပေါ့နော်ငါငါဆက်ငါငါလာ
ပါပါမပါနဲ့ဆိုတော့စကားတော့ပါဘာမပါနဲ့ဆိုတော့စကားတော့ပါဘာဆိုပြီးတော့လောက်ကြတယ်ပေါ့နော်အဲ့ဒ
ไม่จุเลยสบอกเอาเลยไม่จุเลยสบอกเอาไม่จุเลยเลยอยู่ได้แต่ 10 ซ้ายมิสเลยซ้ายมิสซ้ายมิสซ้ายมิสซ้ายมิสมาเดียวดิดันนี่ลงได้ตัวพอมาเลยสรุปดิวันฮอลแลนด์นี่มาตัวฟ
ตัวกูขนาดนี้เนี่ยกูขนาดเนี่ยเวลาแล้วขาดจะตัวอนาลุตัวอีกที่ช่วยทบเยาะพ่อไปเลยอาจารย์เนาะเปเลโลอ่
And same as before, you're training a Siemens network. So that means that this new network up here has parameters that are the same, or they're really tied to the parameters in this lower new network. And this system can work pretty well as well. Um, lastly, just to mention one computational trick that can help your deployment significantly, which is that if this is the new image, so this is an employee walking in hoping that the turnstile, the doorway will open for them, and if this is from your database image, then instead of having to compute this set of features, then instead of having to compute this embedding every single time, what you can do is actually pre-compute that. Mm -hmm. So when the new employee walks in, what you can do is use this upper ConfNet to compute that encoding and use it to then compare it to your pre-computed encoding and then use that to make a prediction why hat. So because you don't need to store the raw images um, and also because uh, if you have a very large database of employees, you don't need to compute these mm -hmm. encodings every single time for every employee in your database. This idea of pre-computing some of these encodings can save significant computation. And this type of pre-computation works both for uh, this type of semi central architecture where you treat uh, face recognition as a binary classification problem, as well as for when you were learning encodings, uh, maybe using the triplet loss function as described in the last couple of videos. And so just to wrap up, to treat face verification as supervised learning, you create a training set of just pairs of images now, instead of triplets, of pairs of images, where the target label is one, when these are a pair of pictures of the same person, and where the target label is zero, when these are pictures of different persons, and uh, you use different pairs to train the neural network, to train the Siamese network using backpropagation. So this version that you just saw of treating phase verification and by extension, phase recognition as a binary classification problem, this works quite well as well. And so with that, I hope that you now know what it would take to train your own face verification or your own face recognition system, one that can do one-shot learning. Then instead of having... Oh, but we can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. ตัวเรียนมาตั้งเลยตัวเปียร์เลยวะเนาะคุณอาเนี่ยหาเส้นนั้นเนี่ยดีกว่าเลยสุดยอดมั้งเนาะตัวที่น่าสนใจมากตั
ดอลเลเซจิเดบอนะโหเลตะทาทาเตียวกุนไลตะทาเนาะคอมเบลบาเมลูเซอะไลกดิเตทาเนาะโหไลกะกุเลลูเดบอนนะมิโซเนตะด